Either upfront in bigger software projects or along the way in smaller projects, we all create design diagrams to gain and maintain an overview of our software system. Surprisingly, many software systems look much different in reality than how the intended design was depicted in such diagrams shortly after these diagrams were created. How could we discover such shifts early on? In this video, I'll show you a tool which enables you to discover if, where and how your software differs from the intended design so that you can focus your refactoring activities. And this tool is the Graph Analysis. Graphs are a great tool to visualize and analyze package or assembly dependencies, class dependencies or even AP calls in so-called call graphs. Graphs are very powerful whenever we want to visualize connections between entities and we want to navigate back and forth looking at the structure from different angles. If we just look at different graphs, we can already see certain formation which already provide us some valuable information. In this graph, we see that nodes build some natural clusters, like this, or here, or here. If we now know that the nodes represent classes and the edges represent any form of dependency between those classes, then we can easily identify the bounded contexts, components, or subsystems of this software and how those are connected. This graph shows an inheritance hierarchy and we immediately get an impression on its size and basic structure. This graph again shows classes and their dependencies and we can easily identify a natural hierarchical structure. If we use different colors for different components or architectural layers, we can again immediately get an impression how those components or layers interact with each other. If graphs become too big, like this one, we need an intelligent browser for navigation. The browser I use is called Planion Graphviz, which I have wrote on my own a long time ago, and which I successfully used many times to analyze different aspects in different software systems since then. You can download it from the link in the description below the video. In this tool, we can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Or we can use the right mouse button click and drag to zoom into a specific area. We can use the context menu on the background to zoom back to the home position easily. If we have zoomed in somewhere, we can then use the left mouse button drag to pan around the graph. And we can use the context menu on any edge to go to a source or a target of that edge. And finally, there's a search bar to search for certain nodes. We can also use different graph layouts to look at the graph from different perspectives. During navigation in the graph, it might be helpful to mark certain nodes as a help of orientation. We can do this with Control left mouse button click. And now if we pan around and zoom around, we can easier remember that node. The real power of this browser comes from its filtering capabilities. Filters are used to focus on a certain aspect of a graph. We can create as many filters as we want, and all filters are organized as a stack. We will use the Filters dialog to maintain all filters. In this dialog, we can easily create new filters using patterns. We can enable or disable certain filters, and we see that those are immediately applied to the graph. We can decide whether a filter should be a height filter or a show filter, and we can change the order between those filters. And of course, we can delete filters again. Combining multiple filters with show filters and high filters gives a huge flexibility to visualize certain aspects of a graph. We can also apply filters in the graph directly by using the context menu on any node. Here we will find different options like removing a node or its siblings, add something, show something. So for example, we can say we just want to see this node with all siblings. And then we relay out the graph and we now see that we just have a focus on this node and its siblings. We can bring back the filter dialog. And we now see that we got back these generated classes. And if we just change the order of the filters, we see how the stacking of the different filters affects the graph 
Let's remove this filter again. Another great way to focus on a certain aspect in a graph is to combine selection with filtering. So let's navigate into this area and let's say we are interested here in this node with all sources. And at the same time, we are also interested in this node with all targets. And maybe just manually select this one. And now we pick any of those selected nodes, right click, remove all but selected. We relay out the graph, and here we go. There are many more options to remove, add, show, select different nodes in the graph in this context menu. And it probably requires some experiments to figure out the high capabilities of all these options. Let's bring back the filter dialog and remove this filter again. And this one as well. Now close it. There's another concept in this browser which helps getting in focus on certain aspects of the graph, which is clustering. We start with opening the cluster editor and we see all the nodes on the left-hand side and all the clusters on the right-hand side. Right now, we obviously don't have any clusters, so we create a new one. With F2, we can edit the name of the cluster. And then we can filter the nodes here on the left-hand side. And if we now click this button or just hit enter, all filtered nodes on the left-hand side are now added to this cluster on the right-hand side. Let's create one more cluster. Let's call it test, just for demo purpose. Test, we select here the cluster and we can just hit enter. And maybe one more, call this work item. And we filter here again and send all those nodes in this cluster. Maybe you have noticed already in the background, the graph was constantly re-rendered. So everything what we did here was immediately applied to the graph. So let's close this dialog and see how the graph has changed. And if we take a close look here, we now see our work item cluster. And here we also see the test cluster. And we can now use this in combination again with filtering. So we could, for example, say, let's select this cluster with all its targets. And maybe we not only select it, but we also remove everything else. And then we have an easy way to, for example, identify all the classes here in this example, which are used by this cluster. And if we now click into the box, not on the node, but inside the box, we will get a different context menu where we then, for example, can decide to unfold this cluster. And we could even use the context menu on the node again to move a node into a specific cluster. Here's the node. Filtering and clustering are the key features of this graph browser, which make it so powerful. And finally, we can use the save button to save exactly that part of the graph as we see it on the screen. We can save it as a dot file or we can save it as a DGML file. That's it for this video. We have seen that graphs are a great tool to visualize complex relationships and that Planion GraphWiz is a helpful browser to navigate in complex graphs. And if you now wonder how to create such graphs, then watch the next video in this series. If it is not yet online, then watch this video now to learn how to avoid a big ball of mud in the first place.